Mike Moore Media, the first place to hear Rockingham County news and information. Rockingham County Today is sponsored by Rockingham Community College. Spring classes enrolling now at RCC. Eden Fire Department responded to a residence at 212 Carroll Street off Church Street Monday around 7 a.m. First smoke seen by the resident, then visible fire in a back bedroom. One person displaced, no one injured. All four fire stations responded. Along with Leakesville Volunteer, Eden Police and Rescue, Rockingham County EMS. Crews spent most of the day clearing fallen trees and limbs citywide. According to Fire Chief Todd Harden, a number of trees down in the Reedsville area at its peak around lunchtime, Duke Energy reported about 3,000 Rockingham County residents without service. 1,683 was the number at 4.30 this morning. The NC State Highway Patrol reports a fatal accident on U.S. 220 Madison near Ellisboro Road Monday around 5.30 a.m. Wayne Michael Hamilton, 61, of West Haven, Connecticut, was driving south on 220 in a 2010 Chevrolet Avalanche, ran off the road, hit a highway sign, and embankment. Hamilton died at the scene. The right lane was closed for several hours during the investigation. It's the first fatal collision in 2022 in Rockingham County, investigated by the Highway Patrol. All Rockingham County school students will have remote instruction today due to the potential of icy road conditions this morning. That's pre-K through 12th grade. Child care will open at 9 and meals will not be provided. All school buildings open at 10. Here's an update on a fatal fire in Reedsville, New Year's Eve, first reported on Mike Moore Media. It occurred at 2606 Reed School Road around 9.30 p.m. Firefighters found a resident inside deceased, Jim Hardy Cochran, who would have been 58 this coming Friday. Another occupant, a juvenile, was taken to the hospital, has now been discharged and is expected to make a full recovery. The cause of the fire, smoking-related. This is the only fire-related death in Reedsville city limits in 2021. Monday was busy at Rockingham County 911. We had a Facebook Live report from the Control Center mid-morning. Over a dozen posts during the day on our page. So much happening, but it was calm overnight. Routine calls to 911. One overdose in the parking lot at Dollar General on U.S. 220, female, mid-20s. Now Rockingham County weather. Today, sunny, high 40, low 25. Wednesday, overcast, high 50, mostly sunny to sunny the rest of the week. High Thursday, 50, Friday, 37, Saturday, 41. Sunday, a 40% chance of rain, high around 50. Triad, record highs and lows on this day, 74, 2005, 3, 1918. Get current weather information anytime at MikeMoore.media, along with Rocking Cam, our live stream 24-hour weather camera. That's sponsored by Heat and Air Controllers, for year-round comfort, whatever the weather. Rockingham County is 573 square miles. Lane's Family Pharmacy covers it all. Prescriptions delivered countywide, serving thousands of residents. Lane's is a phone call away at 336-627-4600. Call during regular business hours Monday through Saturday to speak with the pharmacist personally. After hours, use their easy automated phone system. Covering Rockingham County, north, south, east, and west, Lanes is the best. AutomotiveMap.com presents the Sports Flash on Mike Moore Media. Third and three, Najee gets the call, cuts it back through the hole. He's on his way. He's in the 25, 20, 15, 10.
The action on the Steelers radio network, 24 to 16, the final over the Browns last night. Ben Roethlisberger with 123 passing yards and a touchdown, along with an interception in what was likely his final start at Heinz Field. The win helped keep Pittsburgh's playoff hopes alive. The Steelers are 8-7 and 1. They need a win at Baltimore next week, combined with a loss by Indianapolis against Jacksonville to reach the playoffs for the 12th time in Roethlisberger's 18 seasons. With the loss, Cleveland dropped to 7 and 9. For lightning fast sports updates, download the Score app. It's free and one of the most popular sports apps in North America. That's the Sports Flash, Chuck Sanders, Mike Moore Media. Podcast preview. I'll be talking with Perry Webster, Stoneville Town Manager, this morning around 945. Stoneville Town Council meets tonight. I'll have a report tomorrow. Happy New Year from downtown Delhi. Ah, a new year (laughs) to enjoy downtown Delhi on the boulevard in Eden. Sandwiches and wraps, hot or cold, half or whole, Reuben chicken salad, uh, chicken club, ham, turkey, tuna salad, pimento cheese, many others. Delicious downtown deli, specialty sandwiches, quesadillas, hot dogs, fresh-made salads and sides. Donna and Carlisle Rees and family invite you to stop in and enjoy all the good food on the menu at Downtown Deli or call for takeout. Downtown Deli on the Boulevard in Eden, open Monday through Saturday. Now the community calendar sponsored by Night Owl National Stoneworks in Eden, granite, quartz, and marble for commercial and residential. Rockingham County government offices are on a two-hour delay this morning, opening at 10. Monday's Board of Commissioners meeting was postponed due to the weather. It's rescheduled for next Monday, the 10th, at 5 p.m. Weekly preschool story time at the Rockingham County Public Library. Tuesday, Reedsville. Wednesday, Madison Mayadan. Thursday, Eden. Friday, Stoneville. All at 1030. New Cornhole League at the Bridge Street Recreation Center, Eden. Thursday mornings at 930, beginning this week. Annual County Convention of the Libertarian Party of Rockingham County at the Hive, Uptown Eden, Thursday, 7 and 9. It's open to everyone. Live bluegrass music at the Sandy Ridge Community Center, NC 704, Saturday at 6, the Grassifieds, tickets $4, concessions and 50-50 raffle. The Isaacs multi-award winning family gospel group will be at the Reedsville Showcase at Rockingham Theater Friday, January 21st, 8 till 11. Complete details on Facebook, the Reedsville Showcase at Rockingham Theater. Announcements are made free on the community calendar. Have an event coming up? You can email that to me anytime at rockinghamcountync at gmail.com. Now today's Consumer Report, sponsored by Ferguson Stump Grinding. Experienced, the right equipment, fair prices. FergusonStumpGrinding.com and on Facebook. The holidays are over, but the credit card debt may stick around for a while. A new survey from LendingTree shows 36% of consumers took on an average of $1,249 in holiday debt. That's more than last year when the pandemic sharply reduced holiday travel. AT&T and Verizon have rejected a request from federal transportation officials to delay the launch of their 5G wireless service. The Federal Aviation Administration wants more time to study what effect 5G's more powerful signals will have on aircraft communications. A team of international researchers has concluded that exposure to nitrogen dioxide may increase the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Nitrogen dioxide is a common component of air pollution. The study said exposure can negatively affect brain health. I'm Mark Huffman. Learn more at ConsumerAffairs.com. Now today in history, January 4th, in the golden years of radio, back to 1928, NBC debuted the Dodge Victory Hour, starring Will Rogers, Paul Whiteman and his orchestra, and singer Al Jolson. 1935, Bob Hope was heard for the first time on radio nationally. Oh, here's something to celebrate. It's National Spaghetti Day. It's from an Italian word meaning 
thin string or twine. Lots of debate on the exact origin of spaghetti. A couple of things for sure. It's been around for centuries, and I love it. Now, the birthday club. No debate on that. Let's see who's celebrating for the fourth. Jacoby Vernon in Mayadan, Ron Martin, Eden, Mary Beth Slaughter, Stoneville, and our granddaughter, Hannah Brown, all with birthdays today. Hannah Brown, Mary Beth Slaughter, Ron Martin, and Jacoby Vernon. Have a name for the birthday club? Text that to me anytime at 336-932-1881. Get on the birthday club. We have a weekly giveaway on Friday. We have a drawing, all of our names, seven days of birthday, Sunday through Saturday, and a nice prize package, about a $100 value from Eden Businesses. Now, some big-name birthdays for today. Michael Stipe, 62. Patty Lovelace, 65. Diane Cannon, 85. New year, new feature coming up. Some homespun wit and wisdom I hope you'll like. This will be heard on Tuesday and Thursday. Our music spotlight now on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Here's author Philip Gully with today's Front Porch Tale. Had an old neighbor when I was growing up named Dr. Gibbs. He didn't look like any doctor I'd ever known. Every time I saw him, he was wearing denim overalls and a straw hat, the front brim of which was green sunglass plastic. He smiled a lot, a smile that matched his hat, old and crinkly and well-worn. He never yelled at us for playing in his yard. I remember him as someone who was a lot nicer than circumstances warranted. When Dr. Gibbs wasn't saving lives, he was planting trees. His house sat on ten acres, and his life goal was to make it a forest. The good doctor had some interesting theories concerning plant husbandry. He came from the no-pain, no-gain school of horticulture. He never watered his new trees, which flew in the face of conventional wisdom. Once I asked why, he talked about how watering trees made for shallow roots and how trees that weren't watered had to grow deep roots in search of moisture. I took him to mean that deep roots were to be treasured. Dr. Gibbs went to glory a couple years after I left home. Every now and again, I walked by his house and looked at the trees that I'd watched him plant some 25 years ago. They're granite strong now, big and robust. Those trees wake up in the morning and beat their chests and drink their coffee black. Funny thing about those trees of Dr. Gibbs... Adversity and deprivation seem to benefit them in ways comfort and ease never could. Every night before I go to bed, I go check on my two sons. I stand over them and watch their little bodies, the rising and falling of life within. I often pray for them. Mostly I pray that their lives will be easy. Lord, spare them from hardship. But lately I've been thinking that it's time to change my prayer. has to do with the inevitability of cold winds that hit us at the core. I know my children are going to encounter hardship, and my praying they won't is naive. There's always a cold wind blowing somewhere. Too many times we pray for ease, but that's a prayer seldom met. What we need to do is pray for roots that reach deep into the eternal. So when the rains fall and the winds blow, we won't be swept asunder. Front Porch Tales, a collection of stories by author Philip Gully, is available from Multnomah Publishers. Now today's motivational moment. Every day that we wake up is a good day. Every breath that we take is filled with hope. For a better day, every word that we speak is a chance to change what is bad into something good. Thank you for listening. I always appreciate you tuning in. Hope you have a wonderful Tuesday, friends. And remember to count your blessings.